Hey everyone, how's it going? So it's actually been a pretty long time since we've done a first form Generation 1 run, and there's one Pokemon I've actually been very, very curious about, and obviously that's Slowpoke. The reason why I think Slowpoke is so interesting is that its move pool is exceptional, and most of its stats aren't that bad. But it is the slowest Pokemon in Generation 1 with only base 15 speed. And so I was curious whether that would hold it back or whether its deep move pool coupled with its decent stats would end up allowing it to actually be a lot better of a Pokemon than most other slow Pokemon. So I started off by battling Brock. Now until level 18 I only have one move confusion so you just have to use it and originally I tried doing this at minimum battles but you simply don't deal enough damage to Geodude. You actually get a few levels after you beat Geodude, and because of Onyx's poor moveset, once you get past the Geodude, it isn't too big a deal, but if you just battle the two extra bug catchers in Viridian Forest, it becomes a heck of a lot more consistent. At a lower level to win, you need to actually confuse the opponent, which is only a 10% chance of happening, while at a higher level, that doesn't need to happen necessarily. And hilariously enough, you end up making up the time it takes to battle those two trainers in the extra speed you get beating Brock and, once you've defeated Brock, the trainers on the way to Mount Moon. Something else that's kind of annoying about Slowpoke, and this is the first time this has happened to me, you can't reliably run away from every Pokemon. This was pretty obnoxious on Route 1, where if you ever encounter a level 3 Rattata, your chance of running away is like awful. It happens a little bit in Mount Moon, thankfully Zubat aren't as fast as Rattata, but it still happens a fair bit. And there's nothing you can do about it, but thankfully, Mount Moon is the last time you actually encounter wild Pokemon. You can buy repels after that, so it works out pretty nicely. But, if you want to know why I started again and didn't do minimum battles, the actual answer is Rival 2. Now, again, I can't really go over a strategy per se, because I only have one move, Confusion. However, with base 90 HP, I have way more HP, just a couple levels higher. I actually still needed to beat the both trainers in Misty's Gym just to make this possible, and it definitely still isn't easy. Pidgeotto can hit you with Sand Attack. It has a decent enough chance at critical hits. This is still a very annoying battle, but I tried it about 20 times in the previous run before I realized I needed to reset and do this all over again, and it still took me about four or so attempts to finally defeat the rival just a couple levels higher. And yeah, that's all extra battling does, just a couple of levels, because think about it, it's not a ton of experience points, but it did make a difference, and we're able to move on to the rest of the game. And after we see Bill, I'm going to go and pick up the TM for Dig, Slowpoke can learn Dig, which is base 100 power, and my thought was I would use that against Misty. In the end, for Misty, it turns out Headbutt was just as good. It's base 70 power, and I have a ton of HP, so two Headbutts deal more damage than one Dig. Sure enough, two were enough to knock out Staryu. It required a few more to knock out Starmie because of the X Defend. However, due to the fact I'm Water type and I have a ton of HP, it really can't do all that much to me. And in case you were wondering, well, why didn't you just battle Misty before Rival 2? Because I needed Headbutt. Headbutt is what really makes this battle possible. With Confusion, don't forget, Starmie is also Psychic-type. It would have taken a really, really long time if it would have been possible at all. And let's face it, this was pretty easy. So that's two gym badges. Next on our list is Rival 3 on the SSN. We are going to pick up Body Slam deals a bit more damage, and because I'm slow, flinching is not really that useful. I'd much rather paralysis. And Rival 3 is insanely easy. In fact, they get awful luck and still win on my first try. You may notice I use Body Slam against Pidgeotto. Slowpoke's higher attack, combined with the fact that Body Slam is significantly more powerful than Confusion, leads me to believe that Body Slam would be the more powerful move, but I haven't done damage calculations. Against Raticate to be safe, I decided to go for Dig, and this wasted so much time because I missed not once, not, well, twice, actually, I missed twice. I hit the third time, so, yeah, that was really annoying. Thankfully, I knock out the Kadabra, although it can't really do all that much. 
And with Ivysaur, annoyingly enough, I hit with the first Confusion. It's super effective, so it's going to do more damage. Goes for Leech Seed, and then I miss. So it's a three-hit KO, but despite all that, I still win. Pretty abysmal luck. Definitely wasted some time. What can you do? Well, we can make up for that by having a much easier Lieutenant Surge battle than I thought. You see, the concern here is I'm slow. And Lieutenant Surge, well, not the Voltor, but the Pikachu and the Raichu have electric moves. And seeing how much Thunder Shock just did from Pikachu, Thunderbolt from Raichu would probably knock me out. So I just needed to use X Speed, perfect. And thankfully, with my good attack stat, base 100 dig, I can knock out the Raichu. But that's one of the last super easy battles in this run, because as such a slow Pokemon, Slowpoke will either absolutely dominate with its good move pool and attack, or it's going to get bad luck because most opponents attack kind of randomly and it can lose. And your average standard trainers aren't too big a deal. Most of the named trainers, they're not great. So the next one we're going to fight, of course, once we make it through Rock Tunnel and head to Celadon, is Giovanni. And Giovanni took me a few attempts. Obviously, I now have Bubble Beam, so I can easily knock out both the Onyx and the Rhyhorn. But Kangaskhan did defeat me. And there's not really much I could do. If he uses Rage, I can win pretty easily. Unfortunately, it decides to use moves like Comet Punch and Bite. Comet Punch is pretty lucky since it can hit between two and five times. And Bite is base 60 power. Now, I could have made this easier by first going to the Pokemart and then getting the fresh water and getting the TM for Mr. Psychic. Didn't think I needed to do that, but even though Kangaskhan is pretty bad special, so does Slowpoke. So it did take me a few attempts. I was surprised at that, but it was a good wake-up call. Anyway, now that I've defeated Giovanni, I can go to the Pokemart, get the HM for Fly. Before I go to Lavender, I'm going to get the TM for Psychic because best move that Slowpoke can learn pretty much. And with that, I take on Rival 4, and Rival 4 isn't difficult, but, and I actually battled Rival 4 two times, not because I lost, but because Pidgeotto had opportunity to use Sand Attack, and I was shockingly able to win. I actually also got Psychic Disabled, which was big against Ivysaur since I had to go for Dig, and uh, I can't believe I won this first battle, but you'll notice it just takes more than one hit. The Gyarados takes a few hits, even with Psychic. And not in this first battle where I can't use it, but once I get to the second battle, you'll see that Ivysaur is actually a 2-hit KO even with Psychic. And that's a terrible sign because while Ivysaur isn't too big a deal, Venusaur, which has Razor Leaf, is a massive deal since that will always critical hit. And yeah, since I'm slow, I don't get many of those, although I did get one against the Gyarados. Anyway, Rival 4... Like I said, wasn't difficult, but shows you what's to come in this run. And here's where I have to make a decision. Erica is the grass type gym leader. I'm not going to skip her accidentally. I'm going to skip her intentionally. And I'm going to go to Fuchsia. And I'm going to try to battle Koga. He is the poison type gym leader. So you'd think he'd be easy, but he ended up not being easy. In fact, I lost multiple times. And the reason was wheezing. You see, Slowpoke's poor speed and special mean even coughing is not a guaranteed one at KO, and that means I'm going to get attacked, and so right off the bat, I'm at half HP. And even though I get a critical hit on the muck, and it's clear it was a damage range on the coughing since this one is a one at KO without a crit, wheezing, outspeeds, self-destruct, game over. How did I end up winning? Well, simple. I just need to take no damage going into the wheezing, and then have it self-destruct, and I win. And yes, of course, I could have potentially beat it just by using Psychic and maybe getting a critical hit or something. It just takes far too many hits to knock out the Weezing, and since I'm being outsped, that's just so many opportunities. It only needs one to use self-destruct, and I only had 23 HP to spare because I lost nine earlier in this battle. That is a pretty tough victory for a gym leader I thought was going to be really easy. And now I have to think about whether I want to battle Erica or go to Rival Fival or Blaine. I decide Rival Fival might be the best bet. And I got absolutely obliterated. Obliterated. Erica did as well. 
And that's when I realized, okay, I need to level up because Slowpoke gets possibly one of the most overpowered moves in all of Generation 1, Amnesia. In modern Pokemon, it's kind of useless. It sharply raises special defense. But in Generation 1, since special is a unified stat, it raises your attack power as well. And it only requires three uses. Plus, with the badge boost glitch, you actually are also getting just a little bit faster, at least after you've beaten Koga. So once I have Amnesia, it's still not an automatic win because critical hits bypass Amnesia and physical attacks still do a lot of damage. However, every single Pokemon will be a 1 KO. However, Pidgeot use Sand Attack, so I can miss. And boy, do I end up missing in this battle, especially against Alakazam. By the way, the way I lost the first time, Growlithe used Takedown, got a critical hit, and then Alakazam knocked me out with a mere confusion. In this battle, you can see how little damage it's doing. Don't forget, even though I'm using it for its offensive power, it still is making me a lot more resistant to special attacks. And to reiterate, that makes it so cheap. It's like Calm Mind times two. Really, really good. And thankfully, Venusaur did not use Razor Leaf in the two attacks. It is a 1 KO, but I miss. And I'm able to beat Rival Fival. And now that I have Amnesia, Giovanni won't be too big a deal. I just have to heal. And so I can show off Giovanni while I think about where I want to go next. And it's a tough call. I still have Erica. Sabrina might be pretty easy since I have Amnesia. And of course, Blaine, I have Surf and Amnesia. So realistically, any one of them should end up being a pretty easy battle for me. I end up settling on Blaine since the Volcano Badge does raise your special in battle by 12.5%, which should be helpful against both Sabrina and Erica. And of course, the battle is really not too big a deal. I don't know why I set up three Amnesias. I probably thought it would help me out speed, but no, that's just not how math works. Even if it doubled my speed, which it doesn't, I still wouldn't be outspeeding, but anyway, Growlithe never attacks, and he uses a good old full health super potion against Ponyta. Rapidash thankfully goes for a status move, and even though my defense has been lowered, Takedown still by Arcanine only does about half damage, and I'm able to easily knock it out. And now it's on to Sabrina, and so long as I don't get hit by critical hits, I should be fine. Are you kidding me? Alright, so I'm probably going to lose this one, but I've set up all my amnesias, so now I just need to go for Surf. Okay, okay, so I made it to Venomoth, but here's where I'm probably going to lose. Wow, Leech Life didn't knock me out, cool. So now is here where I lose to Alakazam, unless it goes for first turn recover, which it can do. Oh, okay, that works. Yay, first try victory. I mean, wow, so many critical hits early on, but this is probably how the battle should have gone just with way more HP. So now we've beaten every gym leader but Erica, this time intentionally. And now I'm hoping I've gone to the point where Critical Hit Razor Leaf will not knock me out or come particularly close. Let's see. All right, okay, it does just about over half damage. That's fine. And yes, I needed Psychic to 1 KO. Now against Tangela, I need to set up Amnesias because Vile Plume does not have Razor Leaf and it will knock me out with Petal Dance or whatever if I don't do that. Three may be unnecessary, but whatever. So I've set up, knock out the Tangela, and now... Oh, look at that, I outsped. This is the badge boost glitch in action, but whatever works well enough. Seven gym badges, one more to go, Giovanni, who we've beaten a couple times, and this should be okay, although I'm going to be outsped. Rhyhorn didn't do too much damage, so I knock it out. Against Dugtrio, I was expecting Dig, so I decided to go for Amnesia because I wouldn't knock out Nidoking or Nidoqueen. Instead, I get a Growl and a Slash. So that's a little annoying, but not the end of the world. Now it's just not taking too much damage, and thankfully Nidoqueen cooperated. Nidoking didn't. That was annoying. And now... Wow. All right. Well, that was close, but... Nonetheless, we have beaten all eight gym leaders with the slowest Pokemon in the entire game. And here's the hilarious thing. We are only three minutes. That's right, three minutes. Slower than the champion of Generation 1 pre-evolved solo runs. But 
As always, that's all well and good, but we have six more incredibly tough trainers, rival six, and then the elite four and the champion. These tend to be what either make or break a lot of these runs. So let's see how rival six goes. All right, well, I'm gonna set up three amnesias against Pidgeot, and by the time it's done attacking me, I'm left at just 70 HP to get through the rest of the Pokemon. That's not very good. I do at least outspeed Rhyhorn, so that's nice. I don't expect to outspeed anything else. I don't outspeed Gyarados, and Psychic at least is one a KO. Growlithe goes for takedown, and yeah, that's not very good, but maybe? All right, now it's time for Alakazam, and yeah, we lost Psychic. It didn't do much damage, but it lowered my special. It's gonna be a two a KO, and this will, oh. Well, it didn't knock us out, but if Venusaur decides to attack me with anything, like Vine Whip, we lose. So let's hope we get a little better luck from Growlithe and Pidgeot as well. All right, well, this time I'm getting far better Pidgeot luck, and I'm able to escape with 115 HP. So that's pretty significant. I still outspeed Rhyhorn. However, Gyarados, rather than using Leer, goes for Dragon Rage. So I'm pretty much at the exact same HP for Growlithe, which is why Growlithe is the one I need luck against. And Growlithe does go for Leer, so we should be fine so long as Venusaur doesn't use Razor Leaf. And of course, it would have been nice if my special didn't just drop, so Alakazam's gonna be a 2 at KO. You can see that second Psychic did a little bit more damage, but the fact was, Critical Hit Razor Leaf will 1 at KO me, so I really need some decent luck here. Alright, I went for Vine Whip, that's nice, and of course Psychic is going to knock it out. Alright, so that was good, but... I think it starts to illustrate the issues we're going to have going forward. Having a slow Pokemon means every single Pokemon we face has an opportunity to attack us. And that's kind of the big problem with the Agatha Lottery, which don't worry, we'll talk about soon. But typically the issue is when we don't know what the AI is going to do exactly, it's hard to plan ahead. And so typically my strategy is just to outspeed and that limits the amount of things the opponent can actually do to us. We're not going to have that luxury, so at the very least, we do need to 1-KO everything we possibly can. But alright, enough talking. Let's show what the Elite Four looks like. So, Lorely, the strategy is very simple and, thankfully, effective. We're going to set up three Amnesia against Dugong, since the worst it can do is take down, which doesn't do all that much. With 3 Amnesia, although we don't outspeed and there is some luck because Cloyster can use Supersonic, we're able to knock out Dugong. We do get a Supersonic from Cloyster, but thankfully it is, I think, over 50% chance due to the weird Gen 1 mechanics to miss. And we knock it out. Slowbro I completely messed up due to a misclick. You just use Surf and it's a 2 at KO. Its only attacking move is Water Gun, so it's not a big deal, but I wasted some time. Jinx, we don't outspeed, but the worst he can do is Thrash, not a big deal. And hopefully we want to KO Lapras, we don't. Body Slam paralyzes, that's the worst thing that could happen. But thankfully, we're still able to attack the next turn, and with 76 HP to spare, we have beaten Loralee. Now, Bruno is the easiest Elite Four member, we're a water Pokemon. And you don't actually need Amnesias to knock out any of his first four Pokemon, but I use them anyway, hoping for outspeeding. There is only one way you can lose this battle. Well, one realistic way, and I did lose twice. Machamp has Fissure, and typically, I outspeed everything, and Fissure cannot affect a Pokemon that is faster. Since I'm slower, on two occasions, Fissure actually hit, and I lost. In every other instance, you just easily win, uh, submission can do some damage, but it's not very effective, but that's Bruno. Now we have to deal with Agatha, and while we have a super effective move, we're slow, and it's a special move. The one positive is Dream Eater is not very effective, but honestly, Dream Eater is just icing on the cake. The bigger worries are Nightshade especially, not attacking while asleep, Confuse Ray. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Maybe. All right, well, she starts off with Dream Eater. I'm going to go for Amnesia, hoping one is enough to knock out the Gengars. Another Dream Eater is good, and I need another Amnesia to knock them out in one hit. It's kind of dangerous to set up against Gengar, so I'm just going to go for Surf, Nightshade. That does a lot of damage, but that's one down. Golbat is safe-ish to set up against, but it can use Haze like it just did, and that erases everything, so now I'm going to have to set up two more Amnesias, or I guess one more because I just set up one. 
Confuse Ray, I don't want to see. Hit myself in confusion, I really don't want to see. Wing attack, that's not a critical hit, but that is what I want to see. Alright, I got the amnesia, now I can technically sweep through the team, although I'm going to be attacked a few more times. But she withdraws into Haunter, that's pretty fortuitous since that's not an attack, and I knock out the Haunter, so no Nightshade from that. Okay, two down. Please just, uh, don't use Confuse Ray. Alright, alright, well at least I don't hit myself in Confusion. Three down. Alright, well Arbok uses Fight and I'm flinched. Okay, this is over. Glare, whatever, I'm paralyzed. Oh, okay, I still hit. So, I guess I could win if Gengar actually doesn't use Nightshade. And, you know, I don't hit myself in Confusion. Confuse Ray, I'm still confused. Oh, I guess I'm not. Alright, okay. Uh, I won somehow. That's, that's kind of cool. Definitely can see this being a bit of a massive problem, but hey, maybe this will be our last battle. We won't have to worry about it. And going to Lance, I still have Ice Beam and Blizzard. I'm going to try for Ice Beam. That's good against, well, four actually, but realistically three of the five Pokemon. And hopefully his attacks don't do too much damage. Not much I can do. Can't really outspeed. So let's just try this. All right, well, I have to set up a few Amnesias. Dragon Rage is okay. One Amnesia. Another Dragon Rage, two Amnesias. I'd rather something like Leer, to be perfectly honest. And you know what? I'm worried about Hyper Beam. Okay, I'm still around. That's good. And Psychic doesn't knock it out, but I'm able to set up another Amnesia because it has to recharge. Now, you may think, well, won't it just attack you the next turn? Well, maybe if it heals, which I thought it might do, it won't. So I'm at 61 HP for four Pokemon that allowed speed me. Yeah, this probably won't work. And this will... Oh, it missed. Good. And Ice Beam does knock it out. So that's two down. Slam is good and missing is even better. Okay, that's three down. This is good. Maybe Aerodactyl will use Supersonic and miss. No, Hyper Beam and okay. All right. So, this isn't going to work. And I did try a few more times. I'd make it to Lance, I think, two or three more times. And I never even made it back to Aerodactyl. The simple truth is, because I need to set up Amnesias, have no way of healing myself other than rest, which would be awful, and I'm super slow, I just lose way too much HP setting up, and it's not like I'm gaining enough speed that I eventually outspeed and can sweep through the team. So I just, even though my HP is really good, I hemorrhage health, and there was just no way I could think of with my current moveset to possibly make it through all five of these Pokemon. So I leveled up a little bit more, which sucks. It means we're not going to come close to beating Ghastly, but we could still get a really solid time. In addition, leveling up could make a couple of the other fights more consistent, namely Agatha. It would be nice if I only had to set up one Amnesia versus two. And the reason I didn't use Rare Candies right away is because my experience points were such that I only had a little bit until the next level, and it would be a giant waste. And that's why previously it made sense to use those rare candies just after I defeated the last Gengar, since I would just have leveled up. But obviously, since I did extra battling, I can use my rare candies right at the beginning, and that would make, I mean, all the fights really, but Agatha in particular a lot more consistent, although it would make Laurelie easier too. Which you can obviously see since I'm showing you one of my attempts right now. And pretty much the strategy for Laurelie and Bruno remains unchanged. At my current level, you still do need an Amnesia to make Machamp a 1 KO, unfortunately. It'd be nice if you didn't, but you do. So there is still that chance it could use Fissure and hit. But the bigger question is whether Agatha will need 1 Amnesia versus 2. I'm hoping 1. And I do get confused, which is annoying, and hit with the Nightshade, which is more annoying. But eventually, I am able to go and hit the Gengar with Psychic after a single Amnesia. And it does knock it out, which is pretty good. Now all I need is some decent luck to get to the second Gengar, and hopefully this will be enough to knock it out too. I get Wing Attack and don't hit myself in Confusion, so that's perfect for Golbat. Dream Eater or Confuse Ray, since I'm still confused. Oh, I guess I'm not, but that is perfect Haunter. Arbok I don't really care about. Now if I make it to the final Gengar with more than 60 HP, I should win. Glare lowers those odds a little bit, but I can still withstand two Nightshades, so I should be good. Confuse Ray is the last thing I want to see, but thank goodness, don't hit myself in confusion. So, okay, we have beaten Agatha again. Obviously, this wasn't my second time defeating her, since I have battled Lance and lost to him a few more times, but 
I'm at a slightly higher level now. Let's hope it goes slightly differently. All right, turn one versus Gyarados, we get Leer. That's good. Amnesia, obviously, I'm going to start setting up. Turn two, it misses with Hyper Beam. That's massive. And I decided to go for Psychic because I wanted to see how much it would do with just one Amnesia. Not sure if that's even healing range, but it's special fell, which is pretty good. It then goes for Leer. So I take no damage, knocking out the Gyarados. That is humongous. And I'm still able to use Ice Beam. So if the Dragonairs cooperate, I will make it to Aerodactyl with way more health. Okay, it goes for Slam. Just over 40 damage. Ice Beam easily knocks it out. Dragon Rage, exactly 40 damage. So I'm at 149 for Aerodactyl. Very high critical hit ratio. Very good. That bite didn't get either a flinch or a crit. And I knock it out with Ice Beam. Now, no Hyper Beam from Dragonite, and I'm good. And Hyper Beam misses! Okay, so we've made it to the champion. Wow, uh, you know what? That was pretty lucky. <laughs> we got a Hyper Beam miss from both Dragonite and Gyarados. Definitely, if even one of those hit, I lose. So, you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm, I'm going last. I don't even know if I can beat the champion, but I have a pretty good feeling I should. I don't really have any moves I can teach. No more rare candies. So, you know what? Let's battle the final battle, hopefully. All right, so you can see I pause a bit on Pidgeot. Do I want to set up? I decide to go for Amnesia, and unfortunately, it does start glowing. That means it's going to hit with Sky Attack. Not much I can do. I decide to go for Ice Beam. Sky Attack hits and, frankly, does a lot less than I was expecting. Ice Beam 1 KO's Pidgeot, so that's one down. Next is Alakazam. With only one Amnesia, I'm definitely not going to knock it out. Recover is very good. Surf. Actually, that did a lot more than I thought it would. It might heal here. That's pretty good. In fact, I'm going to go for another Amnesia. Well, it did heal. I was thinking a Potion, but Recover is fine. And I'm going to go for Surf this turn. Another Recover. And this should still knock it out. It does. That's two down. Now, I don't know if I'll outspeed right on. I do. Very good. Surf will easily knock it out. That's three down. I really don't want Hyper Beam. Dragon Rage, very good. I go for Psychic. And that will... Oh my gosh, I thought it was knocking it out. That's really unfortunate. I really need a potion right here. All right, Dragon Rage is okay. I, I knock it out, but 81 HP is not fantastic. Arcanine knows Takedown. Leer, very good. And I think we won. There is a 2 out of 3 chance that Venusaur either goes for Solar Beam or Mega Drain. With two Amnesias, Mega Drain will want to KO, and Solar Beam's a two-turn attack, so I think this is it. All right, Mega Drain, we... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Like, seriously, I mean, you know what? I guess I deserve that after that Lance battle, but that's exactly why I'm upset so much by this. Because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get back there. With these pre-evolved Pokemon, there's always going to be some Elite Four members that are consistent and some that are not. And the idea is to level up high enough until they're all kind of consistent, or at least there's just one that isn't. In our case, we have two consistent ones. Loralee, which I don't think I lost to a single time, and Bruno, that I lost to twice. And trust me, I spent a long time at the Elite Four, so, a couple fissures hitting was to be expected. Agatha, my win rate was kind of like 40%. Because it really, really does depend on what, funny enough, not just the Gengar, but the Golbat. If Golbat uses Haze, it's just so much more risky. Because I have to set up a little bit more and I get confused. And there's just so much more that can go wrong. Now, having a move that does reliably one hit KO or Pokemon is good. A lot of Pokemon don't even have that. But man, if only I could also outspeed. And there really is no effective way to do that without taking away a move that Slowpoke really, really needs. And Lance, to be fair, I've only battled once at this level, so I don't think he's going to be consistent. But yeah, let's try this again. But wait, just before I do, I had an idea. I backtracked to Celadon and bought TM33 Reflect. Now, I do have to get rid of Ice Beam, which is unfortunate. Ideally, I'd get rid of Surf. But, I think Reflect should make this battle a lot easier. It will have the physical damage I take for the rest of the battle. So let's see if it makes a major difference. Alright, well Dragon Rage turn 1 is good. I'm going to set up Reflect. I didn't want to see Hyper Beam turn 1, so that's good. Now I'm going to set up an Amnesia. 
Leer is pretty good. I mean, my defense is doubled, so I can withstand a Leer. And now my special is risen. And we get another Leer. I go for Amnesia again, so my special is plus four, which is very good. And now it's time... Oh, darn, I misclicked. But we get another Leer. This one fails. So, okay, now I have max special. Let's attack. Hyper Beam still does nothing. That Reflect is massive. And I'm able to knock out Gyarados. And now I just need... Whoa! I outspeed the Dragonair. I was not expecting that. That really changes the outlook of this battle. That's, that's great. Oh my goodness. So we're going to outspeed the other one. And we do. So 124 HP for Aerodactyl. Once again, it goes for Bite. No flinch, no crit. All right. Please, Dragonite. Actually, just no critical hit. Hyper Beam, we should be good. Slam miss, perfectly fine. And you know what? That third Amnesia probably is the make or break in knocking out that Dragonite. So we made it right back to the champion, albeit with a slightly different strategy. And now with Reflect, I'm really thinking that this is it. I just need Mega Drain not to crit or no Razor Leaf. It's, it's decent odds I should be done now. But odds do not equal results. Let's see how this goes. All right, I'm going to set up Reflect turn one because why not? Mirror move fails. All right, so Reflect is set up. Now I'm going to set up some Amnesias. Uh, Whirlwind won't do anything, so that's one Amnesia set up. Now it goes for Mirror move, so it uses Amnesia. Not really a big deal. Has no special attacks. So now I have two Amnesias set up. And Whirlwind is fine. So I have three Amnesias plus Reflect. All right, if this isn't the battle, I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, it goes for Sky Attack. I go for Psychic and... No, I needed to use Surf. I would have knocked it out. No, wow, that Amnesia did matter. All right, don't crit, don't crit. Wow, that did nothing. All right, I guess I was uh, getting all upset over nothing. So far, so good. So that's one down. All right, don't lower my special. Recover is perfect. All right, Alkazam, knocked out, two down. Now, ride on is easy. I outspeed, Surf knocks it out. We saw that last time. So that is three down. All right, what's Gyarados going to do? Dragon Rage, that's fine. 163 health isn't too bad. Psychic knocks it out. So now we just have Arcanine and Venusaur. And we get Leer. Okay, all right. Tons of HP. Even a critical hit Mega Drain should not knock me out. Please just don't use Razor Leaf. Come on, Solar Beamer. No. No. I knew it would knock me out anyway. I wasn't at full HP, but... Critical hit, super effective move, ignores my amnesias. And it would take me longer than I spent pretty much on the entire run to make it back to this point. And why was that? It was Lance. You see, while that Lance battle looked pretty good, there may have been something you kind of overlooked about it. And that is the fact that the reason I was able to outspeed those Dragonair is because I got hit with two Leers plus three Amnesia, which is five speed badge boosts. Actually six if you count the non-glitchy one. So that takes my speed from 48 to 94. And that is enough to outspeed Dragonair, which for the record has 92 speed. And trying to get that Gyarados to use two Leers and not use stuff like Dragon Rage and Hyper Beam. Yeah, you know, that was kind of not really reliable. So I would just lose to Lance again and again because having two additional Pokemon, who have Hyper Beam by the way, get a chance to attack you, I simply didn't have enough HP. Even if Dragonite used Slam, I would get knocked out. Plus Aerodactyl has a very high critical hit ratio. Dragonite's isn't too bad either. And so I would lose again and again and again and again and again and again. Until finally, I realized, all right, you know what? Yes, I've saved and already used my rare candies, but I could just try and battle the Elite Four and then not reset after I lose. The reason I reset, by the way, is that the elixirs I need to make sure I have enough power points, those don't respawn. Once they're used up, they're used up. There's no way of getting them back and they are necessary. I need at least one plus an ether. And so while it is a good way of gaining experience points, I need to do this intentionally 
Otherwise, I'll have no elixirs for when I really need to beat the Elite Four, and it will make my final attempts that much more difficult. And believe me, I've been doing solo runs far longer than I've had a YouTube channel. I've learned. And that does make the leveling up kind of frustrating, because when I lose at Agatha, I'm alright, but if I get a really good Agatha battle, if I use an elixir, I need to reset and all the experience points I've gained have been lost, which won't affect my in-game timer that you guys see, but it does take me longer in real human time. And if I use the elixir and lose and don't reset, well then I have one less. And you may have been able to infer from that, I only needed the elixir now after Agatha. Honestly, I just had to switch to using Surf exclusively against Bruno, and as I leveled up, it's a 1 at KO anyway, especially if I use an Amnesia, and it made it slightly less consistent, but it's worth it to be able to gain more and more levels. Finally, I've hit level 71 after countless Elite Four battles, and it starts off the way it always starts off. Loralee is consistently easy, nothing really to worry about her, and as I level up more and more, the easier it gets and the more HP I end up with. In fact, routinely, I lose next to no HP and don't even need to heal before Bruno. Against Bruno, although I don't get to bust out the count impression because not every hit is a 1 KO, I do have essentially a perfect battle where Bruno doesn't hit me a single time, which is very, very nice. Because one thing I started to realize is you actually start to run out of money. I'm still using full restores, and every time you lose, your money gets halved. So if you're not constantly buying full restores and spending that money, the halving of your money starts to be more than you actually make, and you can run out. Thankfully, it didn't happen too often, but sometimes I would make it to a battle very annoyed because I could have had a decent run, but I have no more full restores. Frustrating. But as I've been blabbing about Pokemon economics, you may have noticed this was an incredibly clean Agatha battle. Like, shockingly. And I'm still going to use a full restore because Lance is so difficult. But when I get a battle this good, you have to try. And I'm at a pretty high level. But the key to this whole battle is whether Slowpoke will outspeed Dragonair after 3 Amnesia and just 1 Leer from Gyarados. Let's find out. Right off the bat, we get horrible luck. I don't want Hyper Beam before I set up my Reflect, but what can you do? At least he has to recharge, but that's not looking good. Anyway, I'm going to set up Amnesia, so that's one. There's a Leer, so I set up now two Amnesias. And now just anything but Hyper Beam. Alright, well, I get to set up three Amnesias. And truth is, I guess it's not that bad. Maybe even better than Dragon Rage, because it's going to recharge as I hit it with Psychic. I am well below half HP, but if I outspeed the Dragonair, it's all worth it? And I do. Four additional badge boosts needed, but we outspeed both Dragonair, so we're going to make it to Aerodactyl at 120 HP. Not fantastic, but doable. Once again, we get Bite. Once again, no crit, no flinch. So now Dragonite just has to cooperate. No critical hit. We're good. All right, here comes Hyper Beam. It did decent damage, would have been a 2-hit KO, but it's not a 1-hit KO, we only have 40 to spare. That is a single Dragon Rage between us winning and losing. So it's close, but we managed to eke out a victory. And will we finally be able to beat the champion? No. No, we're, we're not able to beat the champion. And, and why is that? Well, if you didn't guess correctly... It's because while I was able to get through all the other Pokemon, we have a strategy against every single one of them. I got Razor Leaf again. And so we have to try again. And one thing that's absolutely hilarious, because I looked it up after the fact, is that based on the Venusaur stats and my Slowpoke stats, the least amount of damage that Venusaur could have done is 194, exactly what my HP was. The most it could have done is 228. And that actually could have been helpful information, because one thing I was thinking of doing is deleting Reflect, going to get Mimic, and then mimicking Alakazam's Recover to make sure I have as much health as possible for Venusaur. And had I done that, I could have won. However, of course, there is still a 66% chance that it doesn't use Razor Leaf. And yet every single battle 
we've either gotten Razor Leaf or a critical hit. Finally, are we going to be able to get a battle without Razor Leaf? Well, of course, we can't even make it back right away because we need to battle the Elite Four, and since I used my Elixir, I had to reset back to the low 70s. Of course, I'm so frustrated at this point that if I lose at or before Agatha, I'm just going to save because I haven't wasted any elixirs and keep the level ups. So that's why in this attempt you're seeing I'm starting at a slightly higher level. And once again, I'm able to make it through all four of the Elite Four. I'm not even commentating the Lance battles anymore because at this point we have made it to the champion so many darn times. We just need to get a good enough battle and not get a razor leaf. Seriously. S seriously. Uh, you know, like, wow. I guess I should have gone for the mimic strategy. All right. I'm going to try literally one more time. This is my next attempt. If I'm not able to beat this darn Venusaur, I will replace Reflect with Mimic for the final battle. I think it's going to be risky. There's so much more that can go wrong when you rely on Recover, namely your stats getting lowered or critical hits, but I really don't know what else I can do at this point. I have gotten pretty much, except for Lance and Agatha, because they're both luck-based to various degrees. I have gotten it down to a science. My Agatha win rate has also improved. I mean, of course it has. The more HP I have, the less that Nightshade matters. Obviously, but this happened a while ago, one Amnesia versus two. And with Lance, using Reflect, plus setting up just two Amnesias versus three, I mean, it is more consistent. But other than leveling up to a much, much higher level, it's not like I'm at a low level. If we look at the chart, I mean, most Pokemon were able to do this in the 60s. And the weird thing is, there is a massive, right now, we're just over like five and a half hours. And that's a huge outlier. Most of the Pokemon that are around level 70 are far over six hours, usually over seven hours. And so I'm not really sure where I'm going to rank this, but can't even talk about ranking it until I'm actually able to defeat the champion. And, you know, I, I don't even need to really commentate the battle. The question really is at the end of the day, because I have yet to lose at any other point, will I get Venusaur using anything but Razor Leaf? Hey, we did it! Hooray! And yeah, I get it was anticlimactic, but it would not have been true to the run to hype up the final battle because realistically I knew exactly what I needed to do. The question was, when would it happen? But how long did it actually take me at the end of the day? Five hours, 53 minutes. Man, I just don't know where to rank this thing. Because by time, this is the third fastest Pokemon by a fair bit. In the end though, after reflecting a long time about it, I really do feel like the time is a bit of a more accurate indicator in this case than the level. Because it's a slow Pokemon, that's what Slowpoke is. But there are ways to get around its slowness by being more strategic with when you level up. And because the main game is so easy, I have all my rare candies available for the very end. And because the Elite Four is so easy, it doesn't take so long to beat the first three members to gain those levels. And in terms of real time, yes, I did reset a bunch, but it still was pretty comparable with Pokemon like Pikachu. So Slowpoke, somewhat shockingly, despite this frustration, will end up being the third ranked Pokemon on our list. Will a Pokemon be able to beat it? Will something be able to make it into the Poliwag tier? I don't know. Still got a lot more of these to do. So we'll see you then. Take care.